This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Rodin's M37, Edward's BF109G6, IBG's British and Polish destroyers, Dragon's M60A2, and Mobius's Crypto. Welcome to the new product rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly review of the latest kits and accessories. I'm Aaron Skinner, here with Elizabeth Nash. Our first kit today has appeared on FSM's most wanted kit survey before, the M37 3 quarter ton weapons carrier. This 135th scale kit from Roden fills an important gap in military vehicle collections. It was developed by Dodge in 1950 to replace the WC vehicles of World War II and has served the U.S. military in a variety of roles in Korea and Vietnam. More than 115,000 were built between 1950 and 1968, so it's kind of surprising that it's taken this long to get a state-of-the-art kit. The wait is over, with Roden providing a ton of detail, including an engine with block, sump and manifolds, belts and fan, plumbing and other equipment, transmission and transfer case, and radiator. The one-part chassis has terrific detail. It joins to axles and leaf springs. The wheels have sharp nuts and drum brakes. The vinyl tires show good tread and include sidewall lettering. Thread is included to detail the optional front bumper winch. The cab consists of a floor, seats, dashboard, with decal dials, steering wheel, shift levers, pedals, and back wall. The doors have separate inner panels with handles and window cranks. The hood is separate and should be posable. The two-part radiator grill looks terrific. The cargo compartment has detail inside and out on the bed, sides, front, and tailgate. There are wooden benches along the sides, cover supports, and canvas cover. Clear parts provide cab windows and light lenses. Decals give markings for a U.S. Army truck in Vietnam and a Canadian Air Force M37 in Korea. It's good to see a newly tooled kit of this widely used truck. When Edward released its much-anticipated 148-scale BF109G6 a couple of years ago, dimensional disparities disappointed many. But Edward listened to the concerns and has released a new Gustav with accurate wingspan and length. They also corrected smaller things like the bulge at the wing root and the size of the propeller. This kit represents a later production version of the fighter with optional short and tall tails. Recessed panel lines and rivets mark the surface of parts, like the fuselage. The wings look just as good. The one-piece lower wing helps set the dihedral. The cockpit includes a floor, seat, and controls. Pre-colored photo etch provide optional instrument panels and seat belts. The prominent fuel line along the starboard cockpit wall is molded clear. Two types of canopies and windshields are provided for this kit, but unused parts point at other versions in the offing. Pre-cut masks help painting the canopy. All of the control surfaces, including the flaps and slats, are separate and posable. There are more options besides the tails and rudders. Different upper nose panels and starboard bulge, optional antennas, a starting crank, two styles of drop tanks, and underwing cannons. Cartograph decals supply markings for five BF-109s, all shown in stunning color diagrams. Out of the box, this is a terrific kit, but some of you are going to want more. Edwards, happy to oblige with a bunch of detail sets. There's a replacement cockpit with resin and photo etch details. It includes a new floor, walls with structural and control details, bulkheads, instrument panels, controls, and even a clear armored head panel. Staying with the brass and sets, there's a radio compartment. With internal fuselage sections, equipment, and metal hatches. The brass and exhaust stacks are delightful. Check out the level of detail around and on the pipes and the photo etched guards. Armament upgrades include a set of underwing cannon pods, and includes internal detail that can be displayed through posable hatches. And a pair of Werfer Granat 21 rocket launchers for the wings. There's the tubes, rockets, supports, and firing wires. Also available, two types of seat belts, die cut fabric, and the terrific super fabric set with everything printed in place. There's a photo etch set for the external details, including gear doors, gear well structures, radiator flaps, and more. To help with painting the complex camouflage, Edward has created three mask sets. Fitted for the kit, they should make finishing even easier. Finally, for the feared task of painting spinner spirals, there's a mask set for that too. Edward has done a terrific job responding to the criticisms leveled at the first Gustav kit. This looks like a terrific revision and should prove to be a winner. Next, we have the 1700 scale Royal Navy Hunt 2 class escort destroyer from IBG Models. Actually, there are two of them, HMS Badsworth and the Polish Navy's ORP Krakowiak. 86 of the 279-foot vessel were built between 1939 and 1943, with 18 of them being transferred to the Allied navies. Most of them served in the North Sea and Mediterranean. 
The relatively simple waterline model consists of a one-piece hull with nice plate and porthole detail. The decks fore and aft are single pieces with good anchor chains and other features. The turrets have separate gun barrels and shields. Other small parts, such as the masts and ship's boats, look scale fine and attachment points are petite. The funnel and some deck parts show IBG's top-notch molding. Crisp photo etch provides railings, ladders, davits, upper deck supports, masts, and light guns. There's a full page rigging diagram. And three view painting diagrams for the dazzle camouflage used on both ships. These aren't big ships. About five inches long in this scale. But IBG goes big on details and features. Very nice. Our next kit isn't science fiction, but it's advanced technology earned it the nickname Starship. It's Dragon's 135th scale M60A2. This otherworldly looking tank could fire conventional rounds as well as the Shillelagh anti-tank missile. Molded in gray plastic, the hull shows weld seams and recessed panel lines. Similar to Dragon's M48, the road wheels have separate center sections and rims with tires. The road wheel arms, return rollers, drive sprockets, and suspension all look great. Soft, flexible vinyl tracks finish the running gear. The engine grills and rear deck parts have handles and more weld seams. The fenders carry a bunch of stowage and toolboxes with nicely molded handles and hinges. But it's the turret that sets the A2 apart. The upper and lower halves capture the unique shapes. The slide molded gun tube and machine gun have open muzzles. The rest of the details, especially the bustle basket, hatches, antennas, lifting rings, and smoke launchers are sharp. Clear parts provide headlights, the searchlight lens, and driver's periscopes. Photo etch brass supplies mesh for the bustle. A small decal sheet features markings for two 1970s U.S. Army tanks in four-color Murdoch camouflage. One has a name and art for the turret. This looks like a fun build of an appealing tank. Finally, we have a quick hit of fun from Mobius, a 1-6 scale Crypto the Superdog. Another from the never-ending list of the only survivor from the dying planet of Krypton, Crypto helped Superman fight for truth, justice, and the American way. Yeah, for a dying planet, there are a lot of only survivors. Mm. Superman, Superboy, Supergirl, Supergirl mm. General Zod, and all of his minions, <laughs> the prisoners at Fort Ross, like and a now a dog. There's not a lot to the kit. Two vinyl parts reproduce the white dog's head and a body. A cloth cape printed with the S shield in gold finishes the powerful pup. You'll need to use epoxy or super glue for the brief construction, but that means you can focus on painting. The perfect way to make your figure modeling take off. <laughs> well, that wraps up this episode of New Product Rundown. Look for reviews of the M37, BF109, and the Hunt Class Destroyer in an upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the May issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. The perfect way to make gore figure modeling take off. Well, that wraps up this episode of FineScale Modeler's new product rundown. Look for reviews. <laughs>